A solid uniform cylinder has mass m radius r and a rotational inertia about an axis that goes through its center of mass, one half m r squared. It is released from rest at the top of an incline and then rolls without slipping down the incline. If this height is h, find the cylinder's speed and angular speed at the bottom of the incline. Because this cylinder will do constant acceleration motion down the incline, we can solve this problem by writing the force and torque equations and find the constant acceleration and then use kinematics to find the speed. But in this lesson, let's take a different approach and use conservation of energy to find the final speed and angular speed. Although there is friction acting on the cylinder, but because there is no slipping, the friction is static friction. For a point on the rim, the path is like this. At the contact point, it's a turning point. The velocity is zero. There is no displacement parallel to the friction. So the static friction does not do any work. No mechanical energy is lost to this friction. No heat is produced. So we can say the total mechanical energy is conserved. Initially, the cylinder is at rest, no kinetic energy, but it's up high. It has a gravitational potential energy, mgy. And what is the height above ground? It's h. At the bottom of the incline, the cylinder will be moving. So there is a kinetic energy at the end. And because the cylinder is going to do both translational motion and the rotational motion, so there are two kinds of kinetic energy, the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. So we have one half m v squared. We also have one half i omega squared. What is the i? It's one half m r squared. And uh, because it's rolling without slipping, the V and omega, they are related. V is R times omega, which means that we can replace omega with uh, V over R. In this particular case, the R's happen to cancel because this is 1 over R squared and this R squared, they cancel. So on this side, I have MGH. On this side, I can factor out the one half, I can factor out the v squared, and in here I would have m plus half m. We can cancel the m, so we'll get v to be square root of 4gh over 3. And omega is v over r, so it is 1 over r times that. Notice that uh, in this case the r is cancelled and the mass cancelled, so the speed at the bottom of the incline does not depend on the mass, does not depend on the r of the solid uniform cylinder. What it does depend on is uh, this extra number here. This here happens to look very much like the mgh is turning into one half mv squared, and here you have m plus half m, and this part comes from that part of the rotational inertia. So the speed doesn't depend on the mass, does not depend on the r, but it does depend on this part here. And this number depends on the type of uh, mass distribution we have. Again, if this is the hoop, with all the mass concentrated on the outer rim, more mass farther away from the axis, the rotational inertia is bigger, then this number here will be bigger. That means uh, at the bottom of the incline, the speed will end up being smaller. Because the larger the rotational inertia, the rotational kinetic energy would take a larger share out of the total initial mechanical energy. 
which means that the translational kinetic energy ends up with a smaller share, therefore smaller speed at the bottom of the incline.